Uh, I'll say it's 4.30. We'll start the meeting. Call it in order. Uh, welcome to the uh, Select Board's meeting for June 11, 2015 at 4.30. Uh, first on the docket is to amend and approve the minutes from May 28th. Um, they're in draft form, so I guess we can't approve them yet, but we do have them in draft form. Uh, so I guess we'll need a motion to table those until they come out officially. So moved. Okay. Second. Any discussion on that? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, let's hear that. Action items. Ooh, I was just getting down there. Uh, Bill is clear this week. Good for you. Um, I'm still working on the doublehead parking, and I do have a bit of a follow-up. Um, I had an email from Steve, Stephen Weeder, uh, regarding uh, the Memorial Day parking. Um, I'll read this in if you don't mind, Mark, and I'll give you a copy. Uh, on Memorial Day weekend, I had the opportunity to witness the results of a current no-parking signage. Several people parked on the street, simply maintaining distance from the signs. Some drove down my driveway, and after I kindly explained the parking situation, they chose to park in the middle of the trail. I appreciate the effort by all those involved in finding a long-term solution to this problem. However, I think we need to consider some more interim action that could be include, that should include a sign at the exist, existing parking area that states exactly what the parking options are and when, where the trail is located. Please also consider allowing street parking until we have proper uh, solution in place. Thank you, Stephen Weeder. Um, on that note, um, I think there's something we have to kind of address here because it is, you know, obviously getting to be a pain for him and people are being very inconsiderate. And I think we need something to have something to sink our teeth into in terms of parking over there. Any thoughts? Um, the only thing I would say is Chief Jetty is not going to be here tonight. He called me, has other things, he can't make it. He doesn't, didn't have anything significant to report, but he is not here. Obviously, the reason I say that is because he probably should have some input into this. Yeah. Uh, leave people parking in the road has all kinds of issues with it. Mm -hmm. um, so in the summertime, it's not quite as bad because we're not looking at the road being impassable like it is in the winter, but you know, certainly we don't want to make that into a parking area. B. In the summer, they're not plowing. Why can't they park on one side of the road so it doesn't obscure traffic? That's what I was suggesting, maybe, to do something like that. Bob? When they had the barbecue down here, we used to have 1,500 people. They packed up one side of Farm Hill only. Only one, right. And when Black was busy, mm -hmm. they used to pack on one side of the road. Mm -hmm. Bob, any thoughts? Well, I, I guess, you know, can you remind me again um, what the estimate on the time frame was that the Forest Service put out there when you guys met on sure. start to finish the, if, if we went up the road on their land? Um, well, um, the Forest Service, um, in a recent email, um, wasn't really in favor of doing that parking lot. A, uh, was going to be cost prohibitive, uh, was probably going to be five to seven years out by the time you get it engineered right. and, and permits issued and all the necessary uh, paperwork to go with that. Yeah. Um, I think it's a nice alternative myself, yeah. um, but they're kind of thinking about abandoning that idea. They were reconsidering um, doing putting a parking area up by the new path where the Beckowitzes live across the street. Um, I don't think that's going to fly very well with them. Um, they added, they um, explained to me that they would fight tooth and nail to keep a parking area there. John. John, yes, but John and Linda. in that email, didn't it say basically John didn't have a problem if it was located down here right. back and that's true. further yeah. from his driveway? As long as the entrance was below the driveway, he wouldn't have an issue with it. But the reason I asked you about the time frame, I thought it was three to five, but if it's five to seven, that's even more concerning because the traffic issue is 
driven by people who want to use Forest Service land. Mm -hmm. now, I understand that just through the years this has kind of crept in and it's more, uh, there's a higher <coughs> level of, of use up there now for a number of different reasons, but mm -hmm. it's all driven by using Forest Service land and they don't want to be a reasonable part of a solution. And I think that's that because a five to seven year uh, plan out period isn't really reasonable. The Beals could boulder that lot tomorrow and there would be no parking anywhere except onto a road where we've had citizens come in here and go on record in public meeting complaining about a safety issue with parking in the winter. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's a, a three season solution or something like that, but as we all know, there's super heavy use during the winter now because of the attractiveness of those trails with uh, backcountry skiing experiences. And so that doesn't really solve almost the, the, the season that's the, the biggest problem. So I'm not happy with the Forest Service's uh, stepping up to the plate to want to provide a solution. Certainly, if that lot got bouldered tomorrow and our signs, our no parking signs stood, my, and, I, and I don't want to do that to, um, um, for, for a number of reasons, I mean, that's not really the right way to work with uh, an organization, uh, but it's, it would certainly compress their their timetable. Well, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's their problem, and our and our. I, I wish they were were really willing to. Well, I think they really wanted to work on the Beale entranceway. That was that was the primo spot, cheapest, right. short term. I get it. Get it yeah. done. That type thing. I mean, one of the options we briefly discussed was the fact of just closing the whole thing down. Yeah. I mean, that's another option. Right. You know? and, and as unlikely or unfortunate that would be, I would not want to see that done either. Um, it is maybe a we can, you know, I think, you know, the Forest Service, like I said, I think they just got uh, financially and strapped with that, and I think they just don't want to touch it. But um, I did talk with Jay Beal, James mm -hmm. Beal, about it. He was in here, what was it, a week and a half ago? Yeah, it's one it, of the brothers. James, yeah, one of the brothers. And uh, we had a very amenable meeting, and, and, and there was another option that was thrown on the t table there um, of maybe possibly um, subdividing that lot out and therefore uh, eliminating a lot of the liability for the Beals. That was one of their concerns, was the liability mm -hmm, issue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I did talk with uh, Bree from um, Jackson Ski Touring today, and she had mentioned um, about a potential recreational use clause. She was going to check into that because obviously she deals with that with the cross country programs and parking lots there about getting some kind of recreational um, free pass waiver, if you will, oh. that would you know release anybody of liability yeah. with that. So she was going to look into that part. Well, of she's it. probably got that down because that's that lot at the end of Cardin Arch Road is on private land. Right. Right. Which and would be the same setup. That's basically that. Yeah. So I think I think things that you know I don't think anything's going to happen this winter. I think we're going to have to deal with the parking issue uh, at one point or another in terms of the winter usage. Uh, certainly, I like to get it. You know, things moving for next year, if possible. And, you know, you, you can certainly approach the Forest Service again and you know maybe turn a screw or two and see what happens. I'm just concerned about how it's really. Um, encroaching onto uh, a resident's mm -hmm. land mm -hmm. and that he's uh, it's, it's and a little fed up yeah and and and, and rightly so yeah. i could understand feeling the same way if i was in his shoes sure. it just there needs to be a solution that doesn't um take away his rights to use his property and, and access his property and, 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 and become a life safety issue with people trying to get in and out of that driveway. Well, definitely have to be addressed. B. Have you talked to your senators? I have not talked to a senator, no. No. Give them a win. So, it, it, I don't know if we're going to make it a... a uh, those are just my thoughts yeah. on it. I think uh, I, I, we're still probably at the point where it makes sense to continue on with uh, 
the idea that you've kind of started here and you're you're the point person on that, working with Bree, working with the Beals, seeing what can be done to break some of that out or find a waiver to address their liability concerns it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, maybe on your end, you can <coughs> talk with Doug and see what he might have for suggestions as far as signage and things to improve it for Steve immediately if possible. We weren't hearing five to seven years out during well, the It was three meeting. to five. It was three to five initially, and then when he went to the, 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 his, his boss and you know, said, geez, we got a lot on the docket, you know, this isn't, you know, it's a priority, but it's not the highest priority, you know, and all of a sudden, it, come, it, you know, it, it may be less, you know, we don't know until you actually get it on the list. It's not technically on the list yet, so right. those, those wheels have not started yet. So just question you're talking about to let people park on one side of the road are you saying for five four to five years I mean I'm, I'm, I'm my question is coming into the liability side are we as the selectmen in a position to say you can park on the road and block part of the road and then does the town take on that liability if something happens up there um, that's my question and and if our alternative is we don't want to take that liability then and the Forest Service isn't going to embrace this and say it's our problem, we're going to let you guys handle it. Uh, one of the options is to put a policeman up there and say no parking, you can't park it. I mean, I think that it needs to be discussed before you say, well, we'll just let everybody illegally park up there and fill up the <coughs> um, I don't personally don't have a problem with it. The issue becomes can we take on that liability, additional liability. I mean, maybe we can, I don't know, and say, okay, you What can, liability are you talking about? I don't know if you have an accident, something up there in the park half. on the road, you know, that's their liability. That's, that's where they have insurance. Right. Uh, well, I'm not gonna try to be a lawyer here. Yeah, I know, but. but if we publicly permit someone right. to illegally park, right. and that's a decision we made, it's a public decision, I'm not sure you can say, well, I'm sorry right. you had a wreck up there, it's not our fault. Well, we can take the signs down and, and put them up seasonally, that's what I'm saying. But we have a road ban in the winter, a winter, the winter road you ban. Have, yeah. The okay, road so ban in the winter, is, that's, that's a no-brain, that's automatic. And but so to look the other way when it's happening, knowing that it's happening up there in the winter. That's not good. That's not good, you're right. No, that, no, it isn't good, but we didn't give them permission to do that. No. The question is making a statement here, you know, okay, we make a motion that people can park well, illegally on the road. I don't think we should do that. But if you're, yeah, right, because if you're, if, if you want to look at it from a lawyer's perspective, if it's like we know it's happening and we don't do anything about it, does that really mean we're not liable? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't We've had the discussion, right. we know there's liability in it. Right. I mean, if you remember the town of Conway put that sign on the bridge says no diving off the bridge. Yeah. We did that so we wouldn't be liable. Well, that's a farce. They're as liable as they ever been. That was in a public right. meeting yeah. that the selectmen said, we'll put it up to, you know, so we don't have liability. The, the liability is the same. Maybe it works. Then it's negligent, mm -hmm. man. So I, I don't know the answer to this. I don't mind people parking on the road. I, I think. I, I don't know for sure, but I think we don't have the authority as selectmen to say you're allowed to park on the road illegally, and we think no. it's okay. Yeah. No, we don't have that, but we can take the signs down for the season. Okay. You know, that's, and that's, what, that's what I was saying. We can open it up for, the, for three seasons, okay. parking on one side of the road, like B said. Okay. And then, you know, again, I want to run this by Doug, Chip, too, mm -hmm. Chief, make sure I'll, it's okay. I'll talk with him, too. Um, and, and that just as a solution just for this, mm -hmm. this fall, summer and fall, and then we're going to have to hit some heavy signage in the winter and, and prevent them from parking on their own and ticketing and towing when necessary. Because obviously the winter is... The winter is a major problem. That's right, it. right. And that's, but even then, on Memorial Day weekend, I mean, people are parking in front of Steve's driveway, too. Right. So... Um, so did July's they right walk him in? I mean, he couldn't mm -hmm. get out. Fourth of July is right around the corner. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, the season's coming up. I mean, right. it's probably not going to get less people. And he, yes. What makes you think they're only going to park on one side? Well, 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 you would sign it that way. Sign it that way. You know, say parking on this side only. Right. You know. no. And again, if, you know. They, so then you are allowing them to park. You're telling them they can park. On one side only. It's not just no signs. You're saying. It's okay to park on yeah. one side. That's, I thought that's what you were trying them. to avoid. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid blocking the driveway of Steve. No, no, Steve that's, that's been the big issue. I think but you should have a parking period. Let, let the fire service 
Get, get notice of. I, I'm, I'm, this is where I'm coming to. I mean, it's not our responsibility, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, technically, so we're so responsible for Steve to help him out. Yeah, yeah. we should. Uh, and, and however, but that goes back to that business about, well, the police, and if, if you can't get any help from the Forest Service, and it's their responsibility. Yeah. And we're trying to, the only thing we're trying to do, as I understand, is help Steve out. We have no other issues, is it? I mean, as far as no? Well, yes, there is issues in the winter with people parking out there. Different too. question. Then you call in the tow trucks and you can't park there, it's double parking, and you haul them off. Maybe tourists. I don't, well, it's a problem, but that's a different question. Steve Weeder doesn't even have to allow hikers uh, access to that trailhead if he chooses not to. I don't think, I, maybe they have an easement there, but um, he, 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 Beals. Beals. Yeah. Well, the, the access to the trailhead, well, maybe it's the Beals property. Maybe that's what to that, I mean. Uh, yeah. He's probably been there for years. Yeah. Uh, I just, I feel like he's doing a, a, a lot out of the goodness of his heart, and he's paying yeah. a price for it. So. Well, uh, you know, you're, my questions are, I don't think we can try to subvert the inactions of the government on the you know, Forest Service. I mean, it's a problem, and it's, you know, it's a problem, and it's shut it down to put police on it. I don't know. I mean, no parking. I mean, yeah, the permission it. problem is a problem for me. Kevin. It's for the liability. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you're familiar with uh, Douglas Mountain over in Saco, Maine. They did the same thing. You used to be able to park at the foot of the mountain right there, and then they banned parking, and they made a parking spot a quarter mile down the road. Uh, I think it's a town parking lot, I guess, now. Now you have to hike up a quarter mile just to get to the, 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 the trailhead. And I, I know they're familiar with that, but Douglas Hill down there is a, a very famous hiking trail and he oversees uh, Sebago Lake on the west side. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a great place to go hiking. And like I said, they banned all the parking. So what what was the result? Everybody's in compliance and they park a quarter Everyone mile away? Everyone park and they actually have signs. You have and they're compliant. People that are using the trail are compliant. A, right, they made a parking spot for you to park and now you have to work, you know, hike up a quarter mile. Now I don't know if John Bashir would allow parking and they have to hike up um, Dundee Road, but I don't, you know, well, we used to have to shuttle when my, my father had ski trips up at our house. We had like 50 people there on a regular basis. I'm sure B remembers those days. And there were four parking signs of Jackson all around my house. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we had to shuttle people up and down from town. I, I, it's inconvenient. I know I, nobody could be in inconvenience, but I guess that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think, though, if you sign one side of Dundee Road between residences, not blocking driveways, if you park if you signed it April 1 to December 1 and parking this side only, wouldn't that alleviate the pressure of people going down toward the Weeder's house? Well, that's, that was I my mean, suggestion. I mean, it just seems like people don't see any place to park. Whereas if you had a parking this side only, it's inviting you to park. Whereas mm. now when there's nothing that says it's a park free for all. here, then they kind of figure they're stuffing their car somewhere. And I don't think a quarter mile hike, if you want to do that as the proper loop and go up the steep side first and come down to your car, you have to walk a half a mile up Dundee Road. So, I mean, you're there to hike. That's right. Um, but I would think that if you, you know, during the non-plowing time, if you did one side only, it would encourage people. And then you would, it would best behoove us to ticket anybody who parked on the wrong side. Well, but you and you might be creating habits that carry over to the winter too, with people using well, more than one season. Signage, number though, one, and, and number two, um, that road is pretty thin up there. It, it's not really wide, and so mm -hmm. if you've got a full size pickup truck parking, you know, off the road that's still on the road, you you mm -hmm. maybe nest you you could be bottlenecking that down to another safety issue where there's not room for traffic going both directions at the same time, and not really solving a a, a problem from a from a safety standpoint. I, you know, so it's complicated. It really, mm -hmm. you know, I I'm with Bill. I mean, the minute we the minute we allow parking up there, uh, 
we've, we're opening ourselves up. Oh, we are allowing place. parking up there because there's I parking know. up there well, now. Right. No, legal legal parking up there. I don't know. So, I think it's a I think it's an agenda level item. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you're going to hear talk, from the let deals, let me talk to the chief between yeah. now and next meeting. And I'll and call I'll call the Forest Service again. Okay. I think the Forest yeah. Service needs to know that. I mean, yeah. we're discussing whether we would support the Beals shutting that parking lot down and, and well, they haven't suggested that no I know that but I mean we're, we're, we're discussing the merits of what if that happens and what's our role in this and really how involved should we be well and, you know and we're, we're still talking about the expanding the existing lot and yeah building, you know right. building proper barriers there yeah. and bouldering it at some point and making a proper entrance so it distinguish delineates you know Steve's driveway right. from the actual parking area. I think that's the original plan, and, and you know, I hope you know, that plans out. Yeah. But again, they, you know, the Beals are, right. are looking. They've talked. They're going to talk to their people and find out what the uh, liability yeah. is extending on them. And like I said, they offered possibility of a subdivision of sorts. Uh, they weren't going to sell it to us. Obviously, yeah, right. It's going to do a memorandum of understanding, like we have planned on initially, oh, um, and to get that done. And I think it's great that the that. Uh, ski touring foundation stepping in and offering some of their expertise and yeah it was nice today yeah okay and they also know books good uh, everybody else was free of action items so the next notes uh, for the agenda for, I'm sorry for the next selectman meetings are June 25th July 9th and July 23rd and again those are the second and fourth Tuesday Thursdays of the month second and fourth Thursdays of the month all right, moving on to item three. Any public comments? From and I just want to say I, I may have uh, a conflict on the 25th, so you may just be a, a group of two that day. I'm, I'm still not sure. All right. We can move it. I mean, that's not. Yeah, if you have anything important, you, we can move it. Yeah. Any public comments, folks? All right, here we are. We'll move on to the building inspector. Kevin. What do we got? Thank you for coming, sir. Oh, yeah, no problem. Give us glasses, I can see. A <laughs> um, couple of new driveway permits. Um, I think they're both, yeah, they are both for new homes. I think Jay just uh, granted those. And then uh, there's a building, pit, building permit for um, two exterior lights out back, and they've been installed. And I came by the other night on Tuesday night, they were great. And, um, and there was some question about them not coming on early enough, and I think you might have just did it or not. No, he just explained where the sensors were. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, I mean, in, in the dark, they're on. I mean, and it really lights up the parking lot. And then there's a um, some roof. Well, we got two roof estimates back for reshingling the building here, and um, and we had what, two more out, I believe, that never came back. Right. And um, so anyway, the, I think so we're going with the, the lower bid and. I'm going to try to contact the uh, What's the other estimate? the contractor, and also we're going to take a look at um, getting more insulation in this building because there's hardly any. Um, there's six inches in the ceiling over here, which you can see over here. I'm not sure because you can't get to it, but I imagine there's six over here. There's probably six over here, and that's only R19. And uh, the energy code these days, actually, for like a flat ceiling is R49, which is probably. Um, I don't know what the makeup it is, but it's probably almost a foot to like 14 inches of insulation. So, and then I heard too, it's costing the town almost four thousand dollars to heat this place. So, if you did insulate, it would definitely lower the bill, the uh, heating bill, and the water bill. Um, so, we're looking into that too. Aren't you also looking into increasing the vent? Yes, and also getting yeah. What it is, I, I noticed that the ridge is vented, but all the um, bays that go into the uh, Soffit vents, uh, a lot of them have insulation rolled up right from the... It's uh, the soffit vents. Yeah, yeah they just did not open. Uh, you know, when I looked in there, I saw five open out of every other bay all the way down this way. So I don't know bays they were, but there, there's no light coming through, so you can't get through. Yeah. So someone has to look at that and, uh, you know. Uh -huh. uh, it's not much you can do in here, though. No, so. there is. So the question is over here, you can't access it on this side, but with the roofer, it redo, redoes the roof. You can do it then. He could strip one side and you can open it up in a couple spots. It'd probably be like four spots. You know, just little cavities basically. 
and uh, the insulator could re-insulate, you know, blow in stuff. And these cans here, you can put insulation on top of them because there's two types of cans. That right. you can't, some of you can't have insulation on top. These you can. So that's good news. So he could blow some in here if we found out that there was hardly any insulation in here. And I think if it was your private home and like a resident and you found out you only had six inch, inches of insulation in the attic, you would, uh, you'd want to do something because the heating bill, the heat's going right out the roof. I mean, basically. Um, so are we looking at making a decision here tonight? Is no, we're not. I think you guys budgeted, I, I'm not saying any figures here, but there's uh, the budget for the roof that you budgeted for, there's there's some money left over for probably to do some work like that insulating. Mm -hmm. And um, was it 13? So, yeah. 11. Yeah. So, and it came in 11. I don't know. Right, but the, but what we, the Warren article so. was 13. And, 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 13 um, and Warren article was 13 and 15. I don't remember, yeah. So, oh, yeah, stepping them right off, yeah. And then, like I said, there was a heating problem. I mean, it just got so hot over here. See all the shingles that are curled? I think that's from the, the heat of the roof. It's yeah. just so Not hot properly there. vented. Yeah, not properly vented, right. Yeah. So. And, then, and then when I went in there today, actually, too, I was well, lifting insulation. And uh, there's, there's lots of signs of mice. And uh, yeah. anyone knows who have, if you have mice in your house, they love the chew wires. So I volunteered just to put some decon around, like in the basement here or whatever. And, and everyone knows, like, you know, fall time, they all come into the building, and that's when they're really here. So and, uh, and I've seen many, many signs of, not in this building, but, you know, my construction career or whatever, of mice ch chewing wires. It's not a good thing. And they start fires and everything else. So we'll um, we're on top of that. <laughs> good. Will be, all right? Thank and you. And um, I had one more thing, too, is the... Uh, um, the last five years, I estimated all of the um, permit fees that came in, and, and the valuation of this town with a uh, new new building has been about five million a year um, in new construction, wow. and that's from houses right down to little jobs. And I took out one year when the Wentworth would does because that throws the whole scale off. Mm -hmm. That was I don't forget what it was. It was almost three million dollars or whatever. So the permit fee was six thousand dollars. So I took that out. So with the, um, the revenue coming in, it's been, um, it's around $10,000 to $11,000. And I talked to Bill about this. So supposedly to pay my salary for um, uh, 16 hours a week, which, I mean, during the summer, I'm definitely putting that, that amount of time in. It's a little slower during the winter time. Um, and you calculate it out. We budgeted for 20000 So we're going to come up short for uh, revenues. So anyway, I look back at the figures that we're using, and we've been using this, um, it's the International Code Council who sets fees and stuff like that, and suggested fees for mm -hmm. permits. We haven't changed it in five years that I saw in this town. It's almost going on six years. And uh, right now we're using a figure of, uh, if a contractor comes in, they, they tell what the value of the job being done, and then you multiply it by uh, 0.0025. And if they can't figure out the value of the job, there's a suggested list that's updated twice a year from the International Code Council that does a square, uh, um, it's by square foot or whatever. And even the price they use is not realistic for this area. It's based on a suburb in Chicago. Um, anyone knows who does any kind of excavation or any kind of work on any of these, these new projects in this town, hillside, uh, rocks, um, uh, wells you gotta put in, you know, wells, the top of the tire is 35,000. I just talked to a, a well guy. They're putting one on June or away that was 25000 just for a well. So you can see the increased cost um, of, of building in this town. So I'm suggesting just to, to uh, meet my, would be $18,000 for my salary if I put 16 hours in all, you know, the whole entire year. Plus, they, we, it was $2,000 worth of, you know, office stuff, miscellaneous stuff. So, um, I came up with a figure of 0.0039. Now the code, the code council actually, they're suggesting when you go look at their papers, they're using .0075, it's like wow, so whatever. And, and number wise, the one that we're using now is .0025, that's only a quarter of, that's not even a quarter of 1% of the job. And as you can see, you know, .0045 is, um, is what, well, four-tenths of 1%. So I, and I just do some figures together, uh, glasses again here. If someone, and, and this is another thing too, if someone was just to come in here and put a $3,000 deck on, uh, and you figured out that using the old figure, with the $25, we charge a $25 um, 
office fee. So anyway, the permit would be $32.50. With a new figure, it would be $37. So what I'm, what I'm looking at now is to uh, just have a $50 minimum for, for any kind of small permit. Because it's not even worth you know, my time to go out and take a look or I have to go out there twice. Um, and then if you start to look at, say, a small size addition at $25,000, and if you use uh, the old figure of 0 0.0025, and you put the office fee in, the, the, uh, the permit's $97.50. If you kick it up to the 0 0.0040, did I say that right? Um, it's $125 on $25,000 admission. I mean, anyone know, I mean, that's not a lot of money, I don't think. Uh, Especially, you know, gas, I mean, you fill up your truck, it's 50 bucks and fill up a car these days. Um, if you're looking at, a, say, a small, well, not a small, but a three-bedroom or two-bedroom house in this town, um, say, if you're using the figure of $245,000, which I just, I just closed on a house today uh, with the occupancy permit, um, their permit, using that old figure, was, their permit was $637. I... That house was in bad. I went out there four times for inspections. Um, and then looking at the new figure, it would be uh, $1,500, no, $1,005 for the new one. So, um, so anyway, you can take a look at these figures, kick around, and, and think about it, um, and uh, go from there. Well, you mentioned that the $245,000 house, you went out there four times. Yeah, because if it's man, it's, I mean, I have to go out there. If you go by the International Boot Council, I got to look at the foundation, right. you know, footings and, and port walls, mm -hmm. and then they, they can go in and frame the whole entire house, and I can come out there and take a look at it. But sometimes I go out there and take another look. Like if they have a fire uh, fireplace insert, we like to take a look at them, especially in this town. We just had a structure fire at Wentworth last um, last fall that everyone thought was everyone was safe. There was twelve of them. Something failed. We just had a structure fire. Um, <coughs> and, uh, in either it was February or March up on the switchback. Vermont casting insert was in there for seven years, it failed. Who knows why, but I know it was just, you know, what insert was not right. Look at the Wentworth over here, it was almost, it was one year we had a fire in the, uh, these are the condos I'm talking about. It was in the building, we caught it, put it out. Two years later we had another one. We put it out, I don't know why it wasn't investigated more. And then we lost four condos, mm -hmm. right? It was all heater related, um, you know, not, no inspections, and we found out there was a problem. So, I mean, there is a problem with, you know, like I said, it's just, it's just another inspection for me to do, and I do do that. So anyway, and then going back to the inspections, what I do is uh, you got to do a mechanical inspection. It's um, mm -hmm. uh, plumbing, electrical, and gas. Mm -hmm. And then um, <coughs> it's not required to do uh, air conditioning or whatever, but we look at it, you know, make sure it's all, you know, nothing's wrong or whatever. And then we do a final inspection, which is a, a you know, the permit of occupancy. You right. check everything out there. And, uh, but in a perfect world, yeah. um, those four or five inspections that you had to do for that $245,000 house would, right. be, yeah. would meet the 600 fees pretty much. Yeah, it would, yeah. That, yeah. Definitely you see there, it does. Yeah. So yeah. where are these extra costs coming from? Are they coming yeah, from Yeah, if you're looking at extra costs, fail? well, that's another thing too. Let me just, let me just throw this out too. Is I looked at other towns around the state of New Hampshire and um, either the towns don't have an inspector. Mm -hmm. If they do have an inspector, either it's a fire chief doing it or they have a an inspector and somehow it's being paid for a uh, salary in, in the taxes not being raised by uh, building inspecting costs because I looked at some of the costs and they're so low it's like it's not paying a guy's salary but then I looked at other towns like Sugar Hill which I, I compared to this town the view the mountains everything else um, I looked at uh, you know the, the cost of houses in this town compared to they kind of correspond to Houses in Wolfboro, um, Mulberry, they're not on the water. You know, you can't buy a house in this town for under 300000 right now, if you take a look. There's two houses on the market for uh, just over $100,000, one's 300 and something square feet, and the other one's uh, 400 and something square feet. I mean, they're shacks. Mm -hmm. You're actually looking for a two-bedroom home or three-bedroom home that's $3,000 or plus in this town right now. Um, so I don't know if, if I, one of the reasons you were asking these questions is to yeah. get out. So if, if a new home construction, if, if the building inspector's services are being paid for with what we're currently charging in fees from the new home construction, 
you know, what what isn't what is the building inspector doing that is not covering his time? I don't know if that was There's, where. Yeah. Well, Let no, hold on a minute. Not that, nope. I'm I'm just saying I'm not sure if that's where you were going with that, John. But if it was, I think it's a great um, discussion to have. Number one, number two. Um, this isn't even on the agenda. Right. So I'm not prepared to get into an in-depth discussion on it today. And I would suggest, and I don't know if this is for Bill or Kevin or both, but that you kind of formalize some of your thoughts that you're initially presenting here today and that we have an agenda item. I'm willing to make time for sure. a separate work session if that's appropriate. I think it's a great opportunity, and I, I appreciate that you're taking this kind of an in-depth look at what's going on. and, and is our our Kevin's is Kevin's time being <clears throat> paid for by the work he's doing because ultimately that's what we'd like to have happen or really really close and so I'd I'd love to take a comprehensive look at all that and and I think part of that comprehensive look is um, are we staying within the scope of what we're what we're bringing in for revenues here. So, because if, we're, if we've got somebody out doing things that aren't being compensated for, then, then, then we need to have a discussion about why, why are we doing those things. Okay, why don't you let Kevin and I, we'll get back together. Yeah, perfect. Put it, we'll put it on the agenda. You're not going to maybe not be here next time? No, uh, 25th. I, 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 25th. Uh, Two meetings, three meetings. Yeah. Uh, no, next time. No, no, June, not June 25th. June 25th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's look Great. at July 9th. Put it on there, and then you and I need to sit down. Okay. And, and that'll give you plenty of time to really sure. get in depth with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sure. That sounds good. I mean, ideally, we'd like the, the, the fees raised to pay your salary. Yeah, right. It should be a wash. That's yeah, the way yeah. it was supposed to be yeah. set up initially. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe there's something where you have to make multiple visits because somebody keeps yeah. failing. There's yeah. gonna, maybe something has to be built in to make sure that this extra yeah, there's other fees ways, or right. something, yeah. and then, and charge them or something yeah, like that. Yeah. That's a different issue. Yeah, that's all we're looking to, yeah. get them yeah. out. Okay. okay. You and I can sit down when you get it. Going back to the roof estimates, though, did you want to, how long do you want to hold that off? Because I'd like to get something set up. Um, I think we're going to get You want to make a motion on that? That's why I asked if yeah. we were being expected to to mm -hmm. to make a motion and, and approve one of these bids. Are you ready? To I got to know with this, or do you have? You said you had other things you wanted to look at before we. No, I looked at things, and uh, and then, like I said, we had other bids out, but no one returned anything because I think I mean, you know they didn't return emails or telephone calls. Mm -hmm. I just think everyone's so busy, and I don't know how far out that is. So I mean, I would you know want this done this year. I'm not sure. I can't remember if this is the one that said October. So I mean this. They're they're way out. Yeah, that's what I'm they're saying. all way so out. You yeah. might want to get locked in and right, that's what I'm get this done because you know I mean you, you so may not be able to get, well yeah. you, you may have difficulty getting it done this summer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean these are the bits we have today. I'm prepared to make a recommendation yeah. or even yeah. discuss a motion and another thing and, and take a vote. You got to think about roof shingles too. Another thing to take into consideration is you want. You want the shingles on this building be, and still have some warm weather. Right, the seal. So they seal, right? Because if they don't seal and you get some of the winds that we have around here, you're going to be missing shingles. Well, so. I'm, I would like to move ahead too with it just because okay. it's another, you know, put it off, put it off, put it off. Yeah. And need to go ahead. Um, although I haven't talked to Kevin about this part. Um, if, if we make a motion to go ahead, you said with a low bid. Can, yeah, and, and can I, you be the lead person on this to make I, sure that it's the right temperature or whatever it takes yeah, to I do can. this? Yeah, and I um, and, and uh, he had a thing of references, and I looked at the references, okay. and I actually met with one of the contractors today, earlier today, and I asked him. Okay. And he he told, totally recommends this guy. Okay, and well, so just all he wants, so. as long as it, you know, like you said, the yeah. singles have to see yeah, it. Yeah, been doing quite I would say, based on that, if, list. If, mm -hmm. if he wants to kind of keep track of it, Kind of work with Julie, I guess, and see if you can get it done at the right temperature, the right yeah, time, and all right. that. And the insulation well, gets in or out. Yeah, well, that would help. Um, can, is, is that a problem? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know what you're talking about for this. No, no, it's not. It's not um, that's that's what the extra stuff kind of boosts by. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you want to uh, uh, low bid references check out. I'll make a motion that we accept Mike Lyons' roof repair for the roofing job at the town office. I'll second it. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.
Huh? Did you sign that? We'll sign it. Oh, there's a sign. Oh, yes. Thanks. Okay. Right. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks. Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, new business. Uh, first on the docket is the Jackson Public Library Story Walk and around the library. Like, you have anything like to add? We got Likens' letter here. We can read it in the minutes if you want to, or I'll just give it to you. Go ahead, Likens. What do you What do you got for us? Good to see you again, by the way. <laughs> since I came to the library last summer is what we call passive programming and it's ways to sort of entertain kids, keep them coming into the library without actually having staff be there. So it's like a craft project or, you know, a, a question, a trivia question every week or something like that. And so one of the ideas we have for this summer is to have printed uh, outdoor signs so that kids basically walk around a path and every 20 feet, there's a page from a storybook. And what we really liked about this is that it's something not only that staff aren't have to be involved in, but the library doesn't have to be open for a family to come and enjoy it. So because the lane, we wanted to do it just around the building, but because it's town property, I wanted to make sure that it was okay with you all. I like the idea myself. Yeah, we got the email that had that as an attachment. I thought it was really great. I mean, it, I don't know where, where it came up from, but it's, I think it's a great way to increase the level of community attachment that our youth feel towards the town. It's, uh, looks like, I, I don't know if, it looks good. I don't know if this is an FYI or you feel like you need our permission, but I just think it's a great idea. Well, I feel like it's town property, so yeah, I feel much more comfortable with your permission. Yeah. Now, is it going to go out into the woods area, or is it just going to be in this open area, or both? Or? Probably. I, I'm sort of sorry that Jay isn't here, but I wanted to talk to Jay about mowing. I don't want to get in the way of lawn mowing. Right. Um, so we were thinking either of just having him tell me he wants to mow and we'll pull all the signs out, or putting them around the borders, the edges. Uh -huh. I worry a little bit about ticks when we get into the tall grass. Um, well, <laughs> I know, I know. I just you know, right. I had to pull a tick off my little kid. It was not fun. <laughs> Um, and I would love to have it dip ticked off or ticked off. Just for the adventure of it. The maintained trails that are back in there, is that what you... Yeah, I'm yeah. not even... Yeah. Just so Keep the kids feel like they're in the lights. I'm supportive. I am too. I'm okay. Sounds good. Great. All right, yeah. so just it's great get a hold of Jay and see what kind of input yeah. he has for. Yeah. yeah. So logistically, if there's anything as you move forward that you need help with, let us know. I think it's just pushing stakes into the ground. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Any other comments then? <laughs> All right. Uh, next on the docket is uh, intent to cut here, report of cut, I should say, and we need signatures on that. So uh, make a motion to assign the uh, report of cut for what was the lot number here? The phones? No, 29. I'm sorry? It's a THAN 29 for service. Oh, THAN, than Unit 29, yeah. right. $3,227.71. Mm -hmm. So I need a motion to uh, sign that um, report. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, while we're doing that, we, item C is trustees of the trust fund signatures for two documents. Uh, the first one is. Um, Let's look at that one. Second page. Oh, thank you. Um, here, why don't you read the motion since that's that one right there? <coughs> oh, okay. And this is for the. Uh, Withdrawal. Trustee of the trust funds withdrawal. Uh, Move to deposit $5,000 into the bridge repair expendable trust fund, $5,000 into the dry hydrant Welcome. expendable trust fund, $30,000 into the state aid reconstruction expendable trust fund, and $50,000 into the road reconstruction capital reserve fund uh, per the town warrant articles uh, were 16, 15, 12, and 9. Second. 
Second. Any discussion on that? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And you can make this one. No, 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 you to read that one. This is the second one. Second, 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 second motion. Second motion. Spreading the love around. Yeah. I move to withdraw $800 from the Bridge Repair Expendable Trust Fund 0034 to pay for the Mountain Valley Fab Shop invoice 407886 dated 521. Second. And any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that's for the welding we talked about yep. at the last meeting, right? Yeah. On the bridge, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sign the papers. Mark, did you need to see that? Sweet, good idea. Pass it over to Martha. Thank you, Martha. And last uh, signage required in a new business is the Red Fox Liquor License Extension Request. In the town of Jackson, New Hampshire, you get the Red Fox Bar and Grill to serve alcohol outside their license area at the Wentworth Hall Golf Club for the 35th Annual Memorial Hospital Open to be held Thursday, July 16th, 2015 for the Members and Guests Golf Tournament on Saturday, July 11th, 2015, this function will be held in a temporary tent set up for this purpose only. So moved. Second. Second. And uh, does this get inspected, the tent get inspected by Goody and company? Uh, sure I, think, I think when the tent's, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, any other discussion on that? Uh, I'll be sure to let Chief Jetty know that this is one of those parking questions that he oh, has yes. to be there. And Good call. I've yeah. already talked to uh, Brianne about the skiing and I'll just keep the word moving that they'll Great. let us know or the chief will investigate. But this is one of the big ones they'll have to Yeah. Do. Yep. Good call. Any other discussion on that? All those in favor? Right. Aye. Aye. Um, old business? Any old business anybody has? Thank you. Not hearing any, we'll go to public comments. Any public comments? From anybody? Wow. All right. Not hearing any, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Sorry, a little in favor. Aye. 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 You want that letter too, Martha, that I read earlier? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, great. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate your input, as always. I think this is a great opportunity to take a comprehensive look at all of our building inspection services. Yeah. Well, we talked about it, and, you know, it's all we were trying to do was uh, yeah. pay for it. You know, just, yeah. just, just Absolutely. pay for it. That's all you